According to the online dictionary, euthanasia is the painless killing of a patient suffering from an incurable and painful disease. For example, a doctor may choose to pull the plug or euthanize an elderly woman with terminal cancer. The legalization of euthanasia is active in five states, so therefore it is likely to spread to more sooner or later. By passing this law in Tennessee, we should keep in mind that it is a last resort and that doctors do everything they can before offering this practice. I have more recently educated myself on active euthanasia, and in my opinion, the pros outweigh the cons. I can also relate to this topic on a personal level with my grandfather, which I will speak about later. We have to begin addressing that there is a problem in the suffering and cost of terminally ill and elderly patients, and that we should encourage euthanasia, also called physician aid and dying. Although people may be concerned, people should try to understand why active euthanasia, euthanasia may be beneficial to not only terminally ill and elderly patients, but also the state of Tennessee. First, I will talk about the suffering and terminally Ill, of terminally ill patients and also the cost on a personal and state level. When the suffering and pain gets to be too much to bear, what happens next for states where euthanasia is illegal? For terminally ill patients who are in a coma and the only thing keeping them alive is their life support machine, after a certain amount of time, it's like, what's the point? Because nothing is going to get them out of the state they are in, and many are already declared brain dead. Life support is often used in what we call futile treatment, which means it is used inappropriately to keep a patient alive when they do not have any chance of recovery. Keep, keeping a terminally ill patient alive also involves a cost on a personal and government level. According to Richard Meyer from KevinMD.com, Medicare paid a total of $55 billion just for doctor and medical bills the last two months of patients' lives. It's also been brought up that 20 to 30% of the medical bills had no impact on the patients, which means it was a total waste of money. The personal cost depends on a number of factors and it adds up very quickly and can become astronomical for the patient and family. These cost ramifications were obviously the cornerstone for five states in the process of legalizing physician aid and dying, and should be contemplated in the same process for other states, such as Tennessee. Physician aid and dying, or PAD, is an alternative practice and solution to perform on terminally ill and suffering patients. Raymond Tallis, author of the Guardian's article, In the Suffering of Those Who Are Terminally Ill, gives his opinion in great depth of what he thinks should be considered legal in the United States. Talis explains, others, like myself, would like to see a law on assisted suicide amended to allow doctors to provide the choice of an assisted death only to those who are terminally ill, mentally competent, and have expressed a clear and settled wish to die. In an interview with my mom, she explained about my grandfather who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease when I was young. It didn't get really bad until I was a freshman in high school when he got pneumonia. After 10 plus days on a ventilator, he was moved to a nursing home where he was fed through a feeding tube, um, didn't speak besides random babbling, and also couldn't remember who his family members were besides his wife. This is a picture of my grandfather right after he was admitted into the nursing home. Physician aid in dying, in my opinion, has more pros than cons, and more states should move to make it legal. The site Connect Us explained that people deserve to die in a humane way with dignity. People in the states of Oregon and California, where PAD is legal, believe that people should not be suffering for a prolonged period of time when it is known that they do not have much time left. It is ethical for a person to want to end their life sooner rather than later in this circumstance. I believe Tennessee should join the states where physician aid and dying is legal, but also place it as a last resort that doctors can make when the patient is unable. It is possible to distinguish PAD is for the purpose of medical aid and dying rather than act of suicide. The states that have legal physician aid and dying have laws that state actions taken in accordance with the act shall not for any purpose constitute suicide, assisted suicide, mercy killing, or homicide under the law. Now that I have addressed the suffering and financial problems of the elderly and terminally ill, 
with the proposed solution of legalizing active euthanasia, I hope we can all come together as a state to make this problem go away. With states already existing with legal physician aid in dying laws, I think it is in Tennessee's best interest to hop on board. The elderly and terminally ill should not have to suffer when they know that they do not have much longer to live. The option of physician aid in dying should be of choice. Think of how much money we will save our families and our government if we pass this law in Tennessee. If you believe in the legalization of active euthanasia in Tennessee, please stand up for yourself and our community because that is the only way we can move to forward and potentially make it legal. Um, this is my second visual aid that I found on Google, and it's a map of the United States. And um, in green, it shows the states that um, have active euthanasia, and then the rest is where it's still illegal. But I thought that it was cool because the um, navy blue dots shows where aid and dying laws have been talked about in um, the state's legislature, and it's been talked about in Tennessee. So.